Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to be doing some more of the Key Concepts video series where I take some IP routing key concepts and break them down and give you a broad overview to help supplement your textbooks now. In this video, what we're going to be doing is focusing on OSPF LSAs, what they do and why they're there effectively. So really we're just going to discuss them, give you a broad overview of each of the types and then we'll actually have a look at the OSPF database and see how they all fit together. Okie doke. So with that said, let's kick on, let's do it. So let's go to the trusty whiteboard then, shall we? Just pull this up. Now, the first one I want to talk to you about is the Type 1 LSA. This is known as the Router LSA, and every router in the OSPF domain generates these, okay? And what the Type 1 is there for is to describe the state of the router's links, okay? Now, these are flooded across an individual area, okay? So if you have a Type 1 LSA from this router here, it's going to be flooded across to all the routers in the area, but it's going to stop at the ABR and not go into area 2, okay? So it will flood across the entire area, but it basically ends at the ABR. In the case of the ABR, it's connected to two areas, so it's going to generate type 1s for this area, which is going to flood out, and it's going to generate a separate type 1 for this area, and they're not going to mix and match, they're going to be completely partitioned from each other and be in two different kind of databases effectively. Now, the link state ID and the link state database for the type 1 LSA is going to be that router's router ID. So in the case of router 1, we've got the router ID of 1.1.1.1 and that's what's going to show up in the link state database for the type 1 LSA. The second one is the type 2 LSA and that is called the network LSA and it is generated by the designated routers in multi-access environments such as Ethernet. Now in this topology here, we would have, a, this one would be a DR for this little network here because it's got the highest router ID of all the fours and typically we'd also have a DR election on this because it's Ethernet but what I've done is I've actually made this a network type point to point so we've not actually got a DR here. So in our topology, the only DR is going to be this one. So this one is going to generate the type 2 LSA and what that's going to do is it's going to tell us about all the router IDs of all the routers attached to this segment. So that would be router 1, 2, 3 and itself 4. And crucially, it's also going to provide the subnet mask for this little segment here. And you'll see why that's important, okay? Now what you need to realise is that the link state ID here is going to be the DR's interface ad uh, address, okay? So in the last one, it was the router ID. In this case, we're actually going to see this IP address on this interface as the link state ID and not 4.4.4.4 of the router ID. So just be aware of that, okay? So the third one is the Type 3 LSA, otherwise known as the Summary LSA. This is generated by the ABR and what it does is it basically gives you information about routes in a different area. Now how is this information different from what you get in the Type 1 and Type 2s? Well let's just look at the from the view of Router 3, okay? Router 3 is part of Area 0, so when it receives Type 1 and Type 2s from other Area 0 routers, it can build up a very detailed map of everything within that area. It's not just getting the routes, okay? It's also getting how many routers there are, if there's a DR, who is the DR, what's the DR's IP address on this interface, it's getting a very detailed map and it's kind of like getting sat-nav. You've got sat-nav for all the routers in your area, but when you get a summary LSA from a different area, from the ABR, all you're getting is very generic information, all you're getting is the routes. So, if router 3 gets a summary LSA from the ABR into here, all it's going to know is to get to these prefixes we go through this, but we've got no idea of area 2, we don't know if it's called area 2 or area 5 or area 10, we don't know how many routers are in here, how many links there are, if there's a DR we know nothing, all we know is if we're going to get to these prefixes we go through the ABR. So it's kind of like if you imagine that Router 3's view of its own area is like a sat nav, it's got all the detailed road information, it can see how many paths and roundabouts and cutoffs there are. When it gets a summary LSA, it's more like driving down the motorway and you see a road sign and it says 30 miles to London this way. So you know that's the direction to go and that's the cost to get to it, but you don't know how many roundabouts or roads are on the way, you just get a kind of basic summary. Now what I want to kind of impress upon you is that a type 3 summary LSA is not the same as root summarization. 
completely disentangle that from your mind. They're not the same thing at all. The confusion lies is because the name Summary LSA and summarization sound the same and the summary LSA is generated by the ABR and the ABR also does root summarization, okay? But they're not the same thing. All it means is that you're getting a summary of the LSA information, i.e. we're just going to take the roots and leave out all the detailed link information and just pass that in. And likewise, from the same view of, let's say, root or six, it's going to have type one and type twos for all these links here. So it knows everything about area two. But when it gets the summary LSA from the ABR in here, it's just going to know that there's a prefix here and a prefix here and I get to it via this. But I don't know how many routers are in area zero. I don't know how many uh, links offers DRs, okay? So the summary LSA gives you a summary of those links, but it's not the same as aggregating prefixes, okay? So just keep that in your mind. Now, the next one I want to get to are the type 4 and type 5 LSAs. Okay, so I'm going to do the type 4 and type 5 in reverse order. Let's start with type 5 first. So the type 5 LSA is an external LSA and what it does is it describes prefixes learned from an external written domain. So that means in the case of here, if we're going to advertise 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 from an EIGRP, it's going to be redistributed by the ASBR, okay? So that's going to generate a type 5 LSA and it's going to flood throughout the entire OSPF domain. And this behavior here is unique because the other LSAs don't actually flood right through. What they might do is they might be regenerated by the ABR, but not the type 5. The type 5 always stays originated from the ASBR. And in the link state database, you're going to see the router ID of the ASBR. Now, this is absolutely not a problem for routers within this area. So let's say we have a prefix here advertised in by the ASBR of 7.7.7.7. .7 and let's look at it from the point of view of router 6 here, okay? So router 6 sees that to get to, it's been advertised, this prefix here has been advertised by 7.7.7.7. .7 .7 .7 .7 and it's got no problem to recursively look that up because it's got a type 1 and a type 2 LSA for 7.7.7.7 .7 because remember, the router ID is not an IP address. It might match an IP address, but it is not an IP address. It is effectively what in graph theory is known as a vertex identifier. So what that means is that, that effectively, whilst router 6 can look up the information to get to this prefix and it can say, okay, this is the IP address which corresponds to that, what would happen, right, if, let's look at the point of view of router 3, when we get a prefix injected in and it says the originator is 7.7.7.7, .7 okay, and this one has no link state information about that because all it's got is the prefix information from the summary LSAs, it doesn't know the router ID information, so what's going to happen is, is that OSPF is pretty smart about this, is that when router 7 redistributes routes, what it's going to do is when it generates its own type 1 LSA, it's going to flip a bit called the EBIT. Now what that means is that when the EBIT is flipped, when this router gets the type 1 and type 1, that's all good, but when an ABR gets a type 1 which has got the EBIT flipped, it's going to recognise it and say that's an ABR, I better generate a type 4 LSA for all these ones, effectively describing how to get to that a ASBR. Okay, so it's pretty much going to say, from the point of view of router 3, it's going to get the external route from here. It's going to see that the originator is 7.7.7.7, .7 .7, but because it also gets a type 4 ASBR summary LSA, it's going to see that to get to 7.7.7.7, .7 .7 .7, you actually go through 4.4.4.4 and we actually have type 1s and type 2s for this node here. So it's this kind of recursive lookup, okay? That's what's happening. Now this might be quite tricky to follow, so what I'm going to do is actually go into the OSPF database and show you a little bit of this to see it in action because it makes it a little bit easier to conceptualise because I do understand that if this is your first time hearing this, it's going to be very difficult to follow conceptually, so let's go and do that. Okay, so let's just briefly look at the OSPF database quickly because I know I'm really pushing time on this one. Uh, so let's just look at router 9s then, okay? So let's just do a show IP OSPF. If I can type right, show IP OSPF database. And we can see that straight away we've got a router LSAs that tells us how many routers are in our area. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we can see, which matches down there. 1 to 9, that is. Then we've got our type 2s, the network LSAs, originated by the DR, in this case, which is 4.4.4.4. .4 .4 .4, and the link ID is the IP address of this interface here. 
Then we've got our summary LSAs generated by the ABR. Now it happens in our topology, the ABR also has the role of the DR, but they don't have to be the same, just remember that. And the advertising router ID is 4.4.4.4, and the link IDs are actually the networks which we've learned, so that's quite easy to see that one. So in this case, 10.4500, those are the networks, okay? Then we've got the summary ASBR uh, LSA, advertised by the ABR, telling us how to get to the ASBR, and then we've got the type 5 ones which effectively tell us the routes we've learned externally and the originating ASBR. So really, in the case of router 9, it's going to see to get to 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8. It's going to go through the ASBR 7.7.7.7, but it doesn't have a type 1 or 2 LSA for that, so it uses a type 4 to match that to an ABR 4.4.4, and it does actually have type 1s and 2s for that. So if we just do a show IP uh, OSP, oh, I can type OSPF database uh, router, and you don't have all the fours. We can see that for the advertising routers 4.4.4.4 and the router interface address is 10.0.0.4. We get that. So if we look just briefly at how much detail we can get from the point of view of router 9, what we can do is and do a show IP OSPF uh, database router. Let's just look at how it sees router 3. Okay. So we've got 3.3.3.3 .3 .3 .3 up here and we can see the router IP address is 10.0.0.3 but you notice there's no network mass there so how do we actually learn if this is a slash 16 or a slash 19 or a slash 27 this network here we actually reference the type 2 LSA given out by the DR okay so if we just did our show IP OSPF database network it's going to say that for 3.3.3.3, that's actually on a slash 24. Router 9 can actually see the full state of Router 3. So it can see that Router 3 has actually got an IP address of 10.0.0.3 and it's got a mask of a slash 24. Now, what I will say is that in the case of DRs, that's how things work. But in the case of point-to-point -point links, things look a little bit different. You actually get the route described to you twice via a point-to-point -point description and a stub description, which might seem a little bit odd, but I'll just quickly show you. So, uh, database, uh, router, and just do a self originate. So, this is our one here, okay? So, we are our router 9999, and let's see how we're describing ourselves. We're describing ourselves twice. One is a point to point, which gives our IP address, and we describe it again as a stub network, which is not the same as a stub area. I'll get to that in another video. And the second description tells us the mass. So, together, for example, Router 3 can get the information about us, so it knows the full state of the network within the area. So that's pretty much how LSAs work. You can see that the Type 1s and Type 2s gives us lots and lots of detail, and the Type 3s give us routes via an ABR. The Type 4 tells us how to get to the ASBR, and the ASBR advertises external networks. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of this. I know it's a little bit confusing this one, but there really is no way to go through it without being a bit confusing. It's just a question of doing a lot of repetition and then it finally will sink in. Okay, though, so that's the end of this video. The next one's going to be on stub areas and I'll be back tomorrow with that one. And so that's that. So thanks very much and I'll see you guys soon.